Welcome, Blades. Welcome, Magpies, as well. If you are joining us, we are going to look back. I don't know why. It feels like we have to. Uh, I've watched the movie Trauma, Irreversible, and a Serbian film to try and lighten my mood before doing this. We do a fans react to every game. Be easy to take a day off today, but I'm a glutton for punishment. And I thought we would start probably unusually because, let's be honest, we know what Blades fans have thought of this game throughout the day. It might be quite interesting to start where we never normally start with the opposition view. So we're actually going to welcome my friend and also Magpie's fanatic, a fantastic fellow content creator. You may know her from the overlap. It is Kendall. How are you? Yeah, I'm really, really good, thank you. As for anyone wondering why I'm sat in the car, um, I haven't been banished from my house or whatever, but um, technically I have because the builders are in, so it's very, very loud. So actually, incredibly, it's a safe haven in my car right now. So this is this is where I am at. But yeah, thank you for having me, Hal, as always. Um, as I said, I'm not naive. I know I'm not the first face everyone wants to see today, especially Sheffield United fans. But um, yeah, thank you for having me, as always. I'm really appreciative. Ah. It's, it's good to get you on because you're a sensible Newcastle United fan. You and I have spoken, well, I think the first time we chatted was probably about three years ago. If we really yeah. go that far back. And I'd like to ask you, how was that from a Newcastle United perspective? Yeah, it was uh, unexpected. I was very, I wasn't confident before the game, I'm not going to lie, but I never am. Like, this is still like years of like... <laughs> PTSD of like bruise ball and whatever else went on. Um, so I'm not over massive. I wasn't massively confident going into the game. And um, I think you hadn't at that moment yet had like a really big scoreline in terms of against you guys or anything yeah. like that. Um, so I thought it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be really, really difficult. We'd been struggling to get results as well. Um, obviously against Brentford it was only one nil. So I thought it was. I was actually quite. Worried. I'm not necessarily worried going into the game because I try not to be like that now, but I wasn't going there thinking, right, we're going to get a result here. I was like, this is going to be a hard-fought game. Um, but obviously, it didn't go that way yesterday, and it was really nice because um, it was the first away game, Premier League away game, that me, my, my dad and my brother have ever been to together when we've been going to matches now for 16, 17 years together. So, um, yeah, it was a, a good one, to say the least, to choose, but um yeah it was I, I think oh, from us yesterday I know it's hard to listen to especially when you're obviously on the result and end of a defeat and I've been there several several times myself so it's awful to hear when someone's like yeah we were so good yesterday but like we were and our like our team in general I've never seen such a solid performance from like the whole team across the team um and for me Gordon changed the game when he came on so yeah Re realistically when Barnes went off I was like oh no this, I hope this is just not an, like another setback for us especially when we've got such a obviously congested schedule um in the next few months but no Gordon changed the game when he came on yesterday so realistically like obviously I don't want injuries to anyone but it worked in our favour yesterday Harvey going off injured so um yeah it was nice to to see Gordon back to, uh, well at his best really he's been so instrumental for us and um yeah it was a, a good team performance all around really from us I'm going to ask you this question that you said it was a great team performance do you as an away yeah. fan believe that it looked like Sheffield United players had given up at any point um do you know what I, I don't think they gave up necessarily I just think it was like almost head loss. Like it wasn't given up from them in terms of like desire or anything like that. I just think no one knew what they were meant to be doing. There was just times where everyone's head was going down. Um, organisationally, it, it wasn't great. And I must admit, to be fair to them, I think the keeper, and it sounds absolutely bizarre to say when you've been beaten 8-0, but he actually pulled off some really decent saves. And to be fair, in that first 15 minutes, it could have gone very, very differently. Had Harvey Barnes maybe not got injured, had you guys scored that really early chance that you had, um, it could have gone very, very differently. So for me, I think after 5-0, the players just, it was just like a... If I was like that, my brother and my dad both play football. And I said to him yesterday, if you, how hard is it when you're on, like, in that situation as a player? And my brother was like, oh, you just can't even be bothered. Like, you can't find the strength in your legs to, like, to battle anymore because you know what's happening. Um, and I don't blame them for feeling like that. But, uh, yeah, I just think after 5-0, it was just a bit like, uh, like the inevitable, um, really, at, at that point. So, yeah, um, I just, it just was 
probably not great to watch obviously for you guys but like yeah, even no. for a neutral I guess it's just like you it's not great to see a team like do that do you know what I mean so um yeah I'm just it's not not really a, <laughs> ideal to be fair no I think that's a fair way to put it where do you think Sheffield United will finish and then let me know where you think Newcastle United will finish so when you guys got promoted obviously you did really really well um won the championship and things like that and I, I just was like I think they're going to do fine again this season but just it's really sad because the teams like that have been promoted so obviously Burnley I expected to do I'm um, sorry Burnley won the championship but um Burnley were really really good in the championship they walked the championship and I was just like they're going to be fine they've struggled Luton Town have obviously struggled um and you guys, I really thought you'd be fine. But then I did the overlap a few weeks ago before the season started. And the fan that was representing yourselves on there, he was basically just completely negative, like 100% negative. He was like, I'm not looking forward to this season. Like, we're just going to go back down. And I know it. And then my opinion changed then because I was like, oh, no. Like, I'm looking, obviously, as a neutral from the outside and not really understanding what is going on behind the scenes. And when he had said that and explained why, obviously, you guys lost two of your best players um it didn't really look great so yeah for me I think unfortunately I, I hate saying it because it's awful we've been there but um I think it's um probably about 19th um I'm afraid I hate saying it I really do it makes us feel ill because as I say we've done it as well but um for me I think Newcastle fifth is where I had us um okay. I didn't expect us to struggle as much against like Brighton, although Brighton are fantastic, they're like a fantastic, fantastic team. Um, I didn't expect us to get smashed by them, um, either. And the Liverpool game is going to just sit in my memory for ages, but hopefully, we've got like a relatively okay run looking on paper. That's saying the least in the Premier League at this stage. And uh, we've got Burnley at home next, so we should be looking to win there as well. So, yeah, as long as we get back into some form of European football next year, hopefully Europa League at the least. I'm relatively happy with that. So, sixth, I'm actually OK with. Um, OK. As long as we have a decent cup run as well. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be OK with that. Well, Kendall, I mean, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck for the rest of the season. Many of your fellow Magpies were a well. credit to the club yesterday with their behaviour at the ground in observing a very poignant and emotional start to proceedings, as we remembered one of our own, Maddie Kusak, who tragically died at the age of just 27. And they've been really complimentary, a lot of Newcastle fans afterwards as well on, on social media and on YouTube. So I really appreciate that and from all your fans. Thank you very much. No, thank you. The tribute was obviously, I wouldn't expect anything less, but it was amazing yesterday. It was. Um, and yeah, but good luck for the rest of the season. I know it's, it, you don't want to do this, Sean. I know you don't. It, it's the worst crack ever. Like, you, obviously, I know you've been there as well, and I have, so mm. uh, it, it's awful to do it. But yeah, thank you as always for having me. Um, and yeah, yesterday was, from a, obviously a perspective other than the result, the, the ground, the ground oh, staff, crazy, the stewards, the fans were, were really, really good. So, um, So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Kendall will be back on this channel in the future if I've got anything to do with it. She's such a balanced and fair supporter. Now let's get the views of Blades. I want to read this that Steve Billingham said on Twitter. A crumb of comfort for Sheffield United fans. Best I can tell, there's been nine previous occasions where a team conceded eight or nine goals in a match in the Premier League. That's a crucial bit of that. Only three times has that team been relegated in the same season. Alec, do you take a crumb of comfort from that or indeed anything you've witnessed this season? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I remember Southampton getting hammered and staying up. So, you know, it, it does it does happen. We're not the first. And, you know, it's uh, I think I said this to you yesterday. It's such a, a brutal and unforgiving league that if you make small mistakes, you can be really harshly punished. Um. Did I take, I've certainly taken, I've been a bit limited in terms of which I've been able to watch and which I haven't liked. So second half against Forest I watched, which I, you know, I thought that was a good performance. Um, and otherwise I've been, uh, Everton I watched, which is, you know, up and down, but there was certainly a lot of uh, very positive signs there. Spurs I was stuck in the country and couldn't watch, but, you know, we were very good for, what, 90 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> By all accounts. Yeah. Um 
and you know obviously we 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 put up a good fight against man city so i just keep i don't know it was it was such an out of character performance yesterday that it just it just feels like an aberration it feels like a one off it hope feels so. like something something mad happened maybe the you know the players were affected by the maddie stuff maybe you know just conceding 3 in 14 minutes and then you know you that's going to have a, a pretty significant impact on you mentally i think it's it's pretty significant that we're missing McBurney, we're missing bulldog who are not only great players they're two big characters in that squad and True. they're two you know real um tenacious and resilient uh, characters as well and i think that that might have sort of kept the train on the rails a bit more if if they were there and if they were um keeping the standards up um so yeah i i i can't defend yesterday but i think the season as a whole there there have been certain reasons to be positive and um i'm certainly looking for us to bounce back strongly and i think hecking said yesterday we you know we can't let this define our season and it, and it you know it doesn't have to define our season it's it's one horrible game obviously it's got got an impact on our goal difference and yeah. you know let's get let's get McBurney in back in let's get Bulldog back in let's get back to the fundamentals of what this has been built on and let's and let's you know give give the league a good go and, and see what happens yeah you can't spell fundamentals without fun this guy's fun always good value pompey I really am looking forward to this. This is going to be box office. Your thoughts on that result? I think, uh, and, and hi, Alec. Hi, hi, hi Al. Um, just a quick one um, with regards to Maddie as well. Um, big tributes to her. Uh, it was good to see Lauren Hemp tapping her arm, her armband when she scored uh, the other night for England. And, um, you know, we all feel this about her. But moving on to the game, um, I, I really, to be honest with you, I think this has been coming for years, hasn't it? You know, we expected to have this um, when we first went up with Wilder. Um, I think I think we were expecting to get trounced over and over again. Okay, the big surprise was there because we were the new kids on the block. We had a new style of playing. Nobody could suss us out until after the lockdown. So we ended up in this elevated position. But certainly the next season and subsequent seasons, we've always kind of flattered to deceive and we've never been the vanquishing sort of Sheffield United that we were under Wilder. And I think really with the rumours as well of him coming back, I, I just think he's going to reset the side to that. And I don't, I don't think he's got any legs. The result itself, I mean... Like I say, if you're playing against that sort of that sort of t that sort of side, and, and you're playing old style Sheffield United football, it, it's predictable. There was vast holes in the whole of the park, you know, right the way across the pitch, you know, in the midfield and out wide. And Newcastle just exploited it. They just they just took us to pieces. It was a, de a demolition, and it was a real lesson that I think, and, and I have to horribly say this, I think we've been waiting to be taught that for some time. Uh, we we were we were like that during the latter stages of Wilder's uh, exit, you know, against Leicester, the first game that after him, you know, we got absolutely smashed. And it, it's it's something that we, you know, who's going to be relishing going away to to West Ham next time? But I think that's where we just rebuild. It it, it can't get any worse than this. I hope. I really hope it, it can't get any worse than I this. I very you know. much hope no one's clipping that in a few months. <laughs> well, I mean, I do, I do recall, I do recall having a, um, a fans react some years ago when Wilder went, and uh, I think one of your correspondents, it might have been me, said, um, <laughs> we, "We we haven't we haven't seen the last of Wilder. He'll be it back at Bramall Lane." Me. <laughs> <laughs> and quite a lot of people went, oh, "Really?" You know, and and it, 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 it's a possibility, but I, I just don't think it's going to be the. I don't think it's going to be the result that we're going to need. We're going to need. I think we need, we need to clean out the wilderisms in the in the you know the the sort of Egan clean Norwood out the wilderisms. Yeah, yeah. The, clean well, out the the the, the 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 Egan and the Norwood nexus in the middle. But Stop. can I just say, Pompey, if yes. we if we don't clean out the wilderisms, it would mean that Tufty Club as a as a podcast actually makes sense again, wouldn't it, Mark? <laughs> It would, yeah. Do, do not name your social media thing after a, a member of staff in the notoriously <laughs> highest <laughs> turnover of staff game of football. That, you know, I can so, tell you've so, been yeah, at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been at work. I've, I'm, I'm wearing my work gear. I've just literally walked in. Um, so, yeah, I'm from one uh, unenjoyable task to another. 
<sighs> well, that's good to hear. I mean, when you speak about people that have just come from work, Paul is also in uh, in work attire. Paul, welcome. Hello, 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 Webding. Hello, Pompey. How are we doing? Hello. It's good hello. to see you again. Yeah, I'm just as, good to see as, you, Mark. As alluded to, just got home in my work top. I would have put a blades top on, which I normally do for these things, but they just don't deserve it after yesterday, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve it. Snacks, a lot of them, Mark. Snacks, lots of them. I'm feeling really left out with this United gear behind. I mean, best I can do. Hang on, I've got a sock you here. Got? Blade sock. <laughs> um, I can hang that up. Well, the stay up there. No, no, Let's just not, not go into what that's used for. All right. No, yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's off. It's it. off my foot. It's clean. All right. Currently. We've had uh, Kendall with the builders in, and you getting your sock out. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Paul, did you feel, and I'm just going to talk about the game for a moment, call me crazy, but did you feel United were hard done by in that first half with the decisions, the first, or even the second, or even the third? Yeah, I think if you if you look at that first half on its own, without the debacle and the capitulation that happened afterwards, for the first 20 minutes, we did really well. You know, we were on top, we went out, we went at Newcastle, McAtee was the best player on the park. We we had a half chance. And I was thinking we can we could get something from this if we nick that first goal. Um, and then, of course, that first goal happened. And it was just the whole, it was a handball. At the time, I just thought it's going to get chalked off this. You know, it's like one of those where they've allowed it to go on, but it's just going to get pulled back. It's not going to be given. And again, it's it's the league that we're in, man. You know, I just I miss that championship so much, and we probably won't have long to wait till we're back in it again. But it's the whole, it's not in the moment anymore. And then when they actually gave the goal, you're questioning why, how how is that not handball? Yet when the Wolves player knees it onto his hand against Luton the day previous, a penalty is given. Where's the consistency there? Absolutely. And, and there is there is no consistency. And when you're in the championship and you're just dealing with referees that are abysmal because they're abysmal, you can cope with it. But when you've got this video assistant referee, and even with the technology, they can't say the same decision for two identical situations. It's frustrating. It's so frustrating. So that frustrates us as fans. And I think with Spurs in mind, you know, football's a fickle game. Um, with in the 97th minute, my heart was bursting with pride as a United eye and thinking, you know, we're, you know, it's like United have all this up against it. And like within those, those decisions and then that first decision yesterday, I think they were big hits on us as players as well. And, and it's no, no doubt then that that affects us and that affects our confidence and that affects our ability to, to fight and, and come back into it. So yeah, did the decisions ultimately change the result of the game? Probably not, but is it incredibly frustrating that once again the game has turned because of one of these decisions? Absolutely. Yeah, that's first half very nicely summarised. You want, I think, incompetence from one person rather than multiple people yeah. getting to see it again. Uh, Pompey has transformed into Josh. Uh, Josh, welcome back. We've got you here joining us again. Uh, what are your thoughts then? I mean, what can you even say about that second half performance? Yeah, I think Paul's uh, summarised the first half very well. And, um, you know, I, I think I had kind of dropped then after, uh, you know, I, I think we were still trying our best at 2-0 to, to, to get in it. And it was that moment with the uh, with the Robbo tackles and that decision. But then I think we, we, we went and made it a little bit worse for ourselves because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we went to a back four then. Um, and I'm never convinced ever when we play with the back four. Um, and and um, I think, as Kendall said earlier, we just looked all over the place. We, we didn't know where we needed to be. Huge gaps of space. Uh, there was one point, I think, early in that second half where Hecky was screaming at Souza because um, Newcastle had managed to pass the ball directly through the centre of our midfield, completely unopposed. Um, and from there, it, it, it was just uh, it was just chaos, wasn't it? It certainly was. It was really disappointing to see. Um, Mark, let's go back to Tufty Club. What did you believe or, or did you even have any thoughts on the Daily Mail story about Paul Heckingbottom being replaced by Chris Wilder? And do you think that's had any impact as it's just been touched upon in the result? Yeah, I think it was nonsense all along, wasn't it? I don't, I don't know where that story's come from because, I mean, 
the rumours are that he left because of, you know, unhappiness in, in the background. And things. But the, the people in the background haven't changed. So why, you know, why is that going to change? Why are they going to have him back now? I, I can't, especially as he's, he's soiled his record even further now, hasn't he? He's not actually got better as a manager, has he? He's got, he's got worse. Is that the term? So, soiled, is, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like, much like my sock, very, very soiled. Um, and yeah, I... I think it's just nonsense all along. It's just people, papers making up stories, and they, they do this all the time anyway, don't they? And when you're in the Premier League, you get more of it because there's, I'm going to say more interest, only slightly more interest because they're only bothered mm. about the top sort of six or ten, aren't they? But um, yeah, it, it's just people making stuff up to fill column inches. That's column inches. <sighs> column inches yeah the, the interest in uh, in Sheffield as uh, yeah. as you often hear it right we've got a an enormous panel as you can see Pompey I'm gonna come to you what have you made of all this and I mean all of this off the field talk this season well I mean I mean as as uh, Mark said this is this is just it's just turbulence that they're, they're stirring up and the press do like to see what cause and effect they can have uh, uh, particularly on the Clubs down at the bottom and, and the struggling clubs, you know, if they can if they can um, get the fans chatting about this and get the clicks going on the internet, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's all very good, good business for them. But <clears throat> when it comes down to the to the what's happening on the pitch and what's happening in the changing room and in the training ground, it's the it's the strength of character with regards Hecky which counts. And I do believe that he will ride this out. I'm, I'm hopefully does. I, I think there's a universal sort of feeling that. Hecky is our man and the team have, have done their very, very best with the very limited resources that we've been given. Everybody knows that we've not spent great and we've brought in some middling, I won't say mediocre players. They, they haven't they haven't given us half a season yet for us to assess them fully, but they're, they're, they're kind of underperforming and we do need to change the system, you know, and I think... If they if the press can can inject something like this, Wilder sat there rubbing his hands, thinking this is great, this is all about me, and heck, he's getting the pressure put on him. I just hope he he grits his teeth and then gets the players and gets their heads turned round, and next week shows the press and shows the rumor mongers exactly what Sheffield United are made of. You never know. Next week, Southampton did this when they got absolutely trounced by Leicester. They came back the following week and won away. So I mean. Let's you know. Let, let's let that pass over the top of us. Let's discard it, like Mark says. It's it's all fluff. That's all it is. It's all Mark's fluff. Um, <laughs> Alex. On his sock. And socks again. <laughs> yeah. It's only, it's only uh, my sock. It's only the sock. Um, Alec, how are you feeling about Paul Heckingbottom, the job he's doing, and and also, do you think Alec that he, he lasts the season? Yeah, I certainly think he should do. Um, I think we all know the circumstances to which he's working. I thought if they, people haven't watched it, he spoke fantastically after the game to you know be able to process that, to be able to really come out and and say um, you know how we can't define our season and just, and say you know that it was a wake up call for the existing players and kind of a a message to the players, to the new players, you know that that a sort of um, very clear state. Um, demonstration of you know exactly the standards that, that we need to meet every single week to even be to even be competitive. So um, I think to be honest, like every single week, I think he speaks very well after games um, mm. and very um, I think you know obviously like some stuff goes viral like refereeing stuff stuff. But generally, he's not a big one for ranting and raving. You get very concise um, analysis. You can tell he's he. He's quite a deep thinker about the game. I don't know if um, it's, it's a few years old now, but uh, the not the top twenty guys did a great um, sort of hour long interview into him um, before he joined us. But he he talks about like how he's studied the game and how I think he wrote some sort of um, PhD university type thing about like how Dortmund press and stuff like this. So you know he, you can tell that he's a real um, real thinker about the game, and I think. One of the things that always comes across to me is ha remarkably, compared to, especially compared to Wilder, he seems remarkably free of ego. He seems like his motivation is all about developing players and he's all about the process and he's all about making the connection with them. And you only have to look at, you know, he made Anjai the player that he is. He made, he took McAtee from like a scared kid versus Luton to a, you know, game-changing player by the end of the championship season. Like, I think the work he does of individual players and, you know, that whole coaching staff, obviously Leicester and McCall and, 
I know people are criticizing Hudson, but you know, it's only been a few games. Let's let's see um see what happens there. And also, obviously, like there have been moments and set pieces, obviously uh uh a key concern, especially with that Newcastle game, although again, missing McBurney McCurney is a huge part of how we just defend set pieces, whether that's uh, great thing or not is debatable, but he clearly is because he's he's really good in the air and he'll give you absolutely you know he's not the sort of striker who's not going to put a shift in he'll put you know the absolute hardest shift in on the pitch. So and you know that and you know versus Man City versus Spurs there were huge long periods where we defended really well. So you know I don't think we can just be blinded by oh this, we conceded this goal badly so we're terrible defensively. Well no it's a bit more it's a bit more complex than that in my opinion. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely certainly 100 on board with him. I think there's, I think if we even if we go down and we're competitive, I think there's a very strong argument for keeping him on just because of how he's united uh, the club, you know, with his youth background, with his willingness to bring young players in, with his willingness to to work with them, with the way that he's represented the club, with the and you know and our, and our owner and the. Uh, the prince and whoever it might be knows that he's not been able to give him the backing that he he would have wanted to this summer you know due to due to our financial circumstances so i find it i think things would have to i mean certainly you don't make that decision based off one result and you can't just discount the the years of progress that, that we've made under hecking bottom so I'm I'm certainly still a huge fan of him i i'm expecting us to to get back to our usual standards because you know you can just see See when when he's interviewed, you can see that that drive that he has in, in his eyes, and you know he'll be more disappointed than anyone watching that because you know that that wasn't us, that wasn't that wasn't the Sheffield United we've come we've come to know and love, if you like. You know that wasn't any of the qualities that we associate with this team. So, mm. yeah, sorry, it's a lot. Well, thank goodness that was, <laughs> no, it was a great answer, and I saw a, a number of people nodding along. Josh. Let's get you back in on this. Just unmute yourself and uh, let us know. You were nodding so much to Alec. I think it's only right that I go to you. What are your thoughts on what he's just shared with us? Well, I didn't notice I was nodding. Yeah, it must have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think Alex summed it up really, really well. You know, I think as well, we sometimes, all of us as football fans, can be guilty of, of kind of um, rewriting history a little bit based on kind of recency, you know, and um, and we have to look at what heck he's done uh, since it, since he's been here, and and I include that the brief spell that he had uh, in our in our last time in the Premier League as well, where he, he was able. I mean, ultimately we went down. I think we were always going down uh, at that point, but he was ultimately able to to stabilise what looked like a rapidly sinking ship. Uh, he was able to kind of undo the, the changes that, that Slavisha had made, but keep on to the, the attacking um, you know, advantages that he brought into the club. He was managed to, he took that. We weren't scoring goals before Slav came in, and then he managed to hold on to that and take us back to our original principles, push us on, get us promoted exceptionally convincingly as well. And, you know, aside from this, re this result um, and the results that we've had this season, I think some of the performances of... of suggested that we should stick with with Hecke. Um and as well you know we need to be looking long term we need to be looking at next season as well um you know what what, what league are we going to be in if we're in the championship for me I can't think of anyone I'd rather have than Hecke taking us forward to bring us back up um and, and that for me you know unless we keep getting results like this week in week out and heads clearly go then then sure maybe a change is needed but I think talking about that at this stage is, is not helpful. Mm. Paul where do you think we go from here? We've got a really tough set of fixtures coming up. Yeah, we've got tough fixtures all season. That's the that's this league. And, mm. you know, it's it's really hard because I know you, I saw your little rant you did after the match, Al, perfectly summed it up for me that you, you need in this league to have a billionaire owner these days. And if you don't have a billionaire owner or you've not got just that one-off season where all the players come through like we had under Wilder's first season, you just can't compete anymore. And it's... It's so, so hard. Um, however, you've got to remember that Newcastle, Man City, Tottenham, who had over 20 shots against us, aren't the teams we're going to be competing against. And if anything, we were probably far too open at the beginning of yesterday's game. I think if we go into that with more of a defensive mindset, especially without a number nine up front, like against City, it's, it's probably we still lose, but it's a very different outcome. Whereas against the likes of Forest and Everton, who are certainly more indicative of teams that we're going to be competing against in that bottom 10, we've matched them. And, you know, we've come out, you know, pretty much 
on top in certain areas of those games and with a little bit more luck, a bit of better finishing or having players in for that Forest game, we could quite easily have had, you know, six or seven points on the board now. So I think... I agree. You need to look at those. Yesterday was embarrassing. Yesterday was horrible. I work in a secondary school in Deep East Derbyshire and I've had the mickey taken out with me by secondary school kids all day. The, they've got, I got into work this morning and my head teacher came in I, the first thing he said to me was, because he's a Forest fan, naturally, it was he was absolutely gutted when Newcastle scored the eighth because he got a bottle of seven up ready to bring in for me in oh. the morning. So, And I've had that all day and it's embarrassing, but let's brush that under the carpet, put it to one side. Remember that when we played Everton, we could have won if it wasn't for Pickford. When we played Forest, we were on top for long parts of that second half with with a scratch side we've got injured players to come back in uh, if the if the sniper goes on holiday and you know there is positive so we've got to try and remain as positive as we can and in that mini league we're playing in there are points to be won yep we've just lost eight nil paul quietly says there are positives uh always mark, always <laughs> you've just listened to that i've got several questions for you so uh mark you're uh, your partner in crime on the wonderful Tufty Club podcast, which I strongly recommend everyone takes time to listen to, because unless it's the one on a train when a woman's being violently ill, they're really good. That one was awful. Uh, but your partner on that podcast. Thank you. Yeah, um, David Beden, um, dead bat, has refused to join us on this particular uh, channel because he is a secondary school teacher. Now, Paul has just explain there that hasn't that hasn't halted him and you also know all about forest fans at work so you must have had as a listening to that quite a lot that you'd like to say don't prove well me yeah i mean I, I don't work in a secondary school and kids take the pee out of me so you know <laughs> it, it's no barrier to it is it and yeah i luckily i still work in sheffield i live in nottingham i keep my head down when i'm here um i still I still work in sheffield so it's wednesday fans i have to put with so i've got the worst of all worlds everywhere um but yeah, I, I think Mr. Deadbat himself, it can I think I think he's more just afraid of getting getting the mick taken out of him, not for his football allegiances, but just his general demeanour, I think. So, so I don't I don't think it's that. Um and yeah, in in, in, in terms of Mickey taking and keeping my head down, I, yesterday, you know, as others have said, it's sort of a it's 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 hopefully a one off. Um yeah. and yeah, I, the the Forest game as as has been alluded to, I'd have quite happily walked walked around with my head held high around here because I thought we're okay from that. And um, I normally don't walk around with my head held high because there's dog muck everywhere. Um, but it's I, I I I agree with what everyone said. But before yesterday's game, I was feeling pretty positive. You know, we'd not exactly torn up trees, but we'd not looked out of place either. And, you know, the City game, we, we played kind of a perfect-ish game. Even if you rule out the fact by our time, it could have been 4-0 with the chances they had and the saves was made. But we played that game and, and we did it well. And, you know, kind of you could say the same with the Spurs game. Um, it was a fair result in the end. You know, they had loads of chances. But, you know, we played that game in the way we had and we, we almost got a result out of it. So before yesterday, I thought the results were going to come. <laughs> I even went on Shore and View and said, yeah, I think we'll lose against Newcastle, but it's not going to be a hammering. So, you know, what do I know? I won't, I won't invite you back on because I know nothing <laughs> about football. So, I mean, it's, so it's your fault. Uh, Pompey. Yeah. yeah. You, you, Hello. You, you know, you've been a, a fairly strong, opinionated Sheffield United fan who is banned from every forum under the sun. Uh, but what would what would you actually like to see if, if you were in charge of Sheffield United? You're about to take the team for West Ham. What do you do? Talk me through the changes you'd make. Well, obviously, the problem at the moment is we're conceding a lot of goals from, from set plays and crosses. You know, you've only to look at the Forest game, you've only to look at certain other games, the ball drops almost effortlessly between two players onto the head of an opposition player. Now, we've got to sort that out. We, we didn't used to be like this. We didn't used to concede goals quite so freely from set plays. But yet, every ball that goes in the box now, everybody's panicking about it and, it, and it's an opposition head that gets onto it. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, the the the, the, the Forest game is a, is a key example. The Spurs game. What I'm surprised with, with Hecky is uh, when they brought, I think it was Decore they brought on, wasn't it? What was it? Uh, the the guy from Brazil? They brought him on, and I thought to myself, I thought he's he, this guy's going to score. He's got a point to prove. Richarlison, sorry, do, do forgive me, Richarlison. So he, he's brought on, and I would have immediately put our best central defender, Oliver McBurney, onto him. <laughs> 
and and said, <laughs> you don't let six inches between you and him. Uh, unfortunately, it was Chris Basham against the Brazilian international and he lost him effortlessly and got the equaliser. But what's wrong with putting Ollie McBurney from set pieces, from set pieces, he attacks the cross. Uh, everybody else is marking zones. Oliver McBurney is the person with his eye on the ball and really should have been side by side with Rich Allison and, and not let him out of his sight. And it's that kind of error in tactics that I think that needs cleaning up. We've got to stop conceding goals such as that. You want to look at that Forest game, like I say, the two goals we conceded were just, they were dreadful. And it completely negated something like Harmer's screamer from 25 yards. Uh, and, and suddenly we're on the back foot. So, and, and the other thing about it as well is obviously the midfield. The midfield needs sorting out. I'm not sure about De Souza. He, he runs about a lot. He doesn't what? seem to have... <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about him. I'm, I'm not sure about how he, he runs. He runs about a lot. He, he he's clearly struggling with the with the pressure and the the sort of the dynamics of the Premiership game. You know, it it doesn't seem to have enough outlets for him. And like, like as was said yesterday with Hecky playing hell with the midfield, the gaps that were opening up yesterday were unbelievable. And we need there to close that up. Yeah, we need to yeah. close that up. And and and, and Sousa, Sousa can be that person. Think about what we had last season when we had Doyle in the side. The guy would collect the ball, he would battle the ball out and he would take it up the pitch at his feet. He would be looking for outlets and he would gain 30 or 40 yards up the pitch before he'd lay it off to McAtee or in, at the feet of Ndai. We haven't got that. All we've got is five years, six years worth of Oliver Norwood who stands around and points at things and knocks the odd ball off to a marked winger. It's that kind of thing that's that, that's gonna that's gonna it's gonna be the uh, yeah I know I'm, I'm I'm I get brickbats for this I, I think I was banned for this from from S twenty four SU or amongst other things uh, just for <laughs> just for being just for being down on Oliver Norwood I mean he's a club legend I would I would like someone to come out with a whiteboard and some of them little markers and explain exactly what he does in a game because to be honest with you we I think we've once him and Egan are out of the side and we start to reform and regroup it and get rid of these wilderisms, as I've said, I think we'll start to see some kind of Sheffield United um, resurgence. I just think we've we've played that game too long. We need to start going back to basics, going back to basic form. Even if it does mean... Play, we can't play four at the back with Egan. We can't. He's absolutely hopeless at playing four in the back. Although he plays for, North, he plays for Ireland four with four in the back. But in red and white stripes, yeah, he's got... <laughs> sorry? I yeah, I, I just, well. <laughs> I just, I just can't. I, I, we, we, we've got to, we, we've got to get rid of these, these elements of Wilder out the side and just come back to being, uh, playing, playing basic football through the fence centre of the park and 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 utilising the wingers for what they are. We, we're not very good at crossing. We never have been since Jack O'Connell left. He was probably the best crosser of the ball um, mm. since, since he left our service. Um, it's that it's those areas that we really need to concentrate on because let's face it. Did, did Archer actually have anything to do? Um, but the, these kind he, of games, the last two games, aren't they aren't going to be Archer kind of games. I'm actually really surprised that he started. And I think it's quite harsh on him because he's not going to get any service whatsoever. I know, I know, I know. And, it's, and, it's and that, only comes, that only comes from keeping the ball and, and not being dispossessed so easily and driving it up the centre of the park and putting him, putting him in on goal. Um, you know, it, it doesn't come from silly, sloppy mistakes in the centre of the park and... And leaving massive gaps between the back three, so that you know, you know, someone like Wilson, who's really good at getting between getting between those central defenders and nodding it in for the fourth. You know, it, it, that was such an yeah. elemental goal. It really was. Basics, Alec. Sorry, I want to come to you. Are you confident Sheffield United can get a result at West Ham United? Yeah, as long as we play like we have been, and not Sunday. <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> Obviously, if we, if we play like we did on Sunday, then yeah, no, obviously not. But um, yeah, um, <clears throat> I mean, McBurney should certainly be back. I, the indications are, I think, that will up will be back as well. I think both of those will help. And I think, you know, just, yeah, generally get back to what we do. I mean, they're, they're, I do have a worry in that they're another quite physical side. Um, and we definitely struggle with that. I noticed there's a huge... The difference in kind of athleticism and, and physicality when you step up to the Premier League is absolutely massive. Um, and that's been really noticeable 
you know, like Palace, Everton, Newcastle, uh, West Ham. I mean, all of them, to be honest. All of them have <laughs> massive, massive players who are really hard to get the ball off and really difficult to keep with it. I mean, you just... I mean, Dan Byrne is possibly the epitome of it. And now we're trying to mark Dan Byrne. It's just, <laughs> I mean, anyone trying to mark Dan Byrne from a from a corner is, is going to struggle. Um, so they they do they definitely have a, a physical, dangerous threat. But, you know, as if we, yes, they were so slack. If we just, if we tighten things up and if, you know, that, that effort and that intensity and that um, all our kind of defining characteristics are there, then, yeah, I think we can give anyone a tough game. And, and um, we've got, We've got players who, who can who can make a difference uh, up the top end of the pitch as well. So yeah, I mean, confident is always hard to say, but <laughs> we should be a hell of a lot better. Alec, thank you for joining us. We're going to go through each and every one of you. Mark, what are your feelings for the rest of the season, my friend? Where do you see it going? Much the same as it has done, to be honest. I think the squad's paper thin or wafer, which is thinner, paper or wafer. Anyway, whichever the thinner paper. start then is, a paper. Well, it depends, I know. If it's no, like it's one layer of wafer... Anyway, the point is, yeah, it's yeah. very thin, very thin. If you take one of those little bits of a tonic wafer out, one of those, it's and that also, thin. And uh, yeah, it is only a wafer thin is the famous wafer line. Wafer thin, a wafer mm. thin, like the mint, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's not very thick, put it that way. So it, yeah, as soon as we get an injury or, or an enforced absence like with McBurney, we're in trouble. It's, it's as simple as that. And, and I think we've got, I think the first team is fairly competitive. I think what Pompey said earlier is true. There's just gaps everywhere. There's gaps through the middle at the minute. I think there's always been gaps with the back three. I think when they've played together for quite a while, which this current back three, it's, it's been chopping and changing a little bit. Um, when they played together quite a while, it sort of solidifies a bit. But we've had over the past three seasons, just getting in between the central and, and one of the wide ones and just easy goals. Championship, we don't get punished as much. You know, we've, we've had chances without conceding. In the Premier League, we even get punished every time. So, yeah, sure up those gaps a bit. Um, we we might we might make five or six points. Um, so yeah, I, th I think I think yeah we can we can be positive. I think yeah against the lower teams we've got a chance, but I, I just don't I just don't see it against the, the bigger teams, especially when we've got people out. We just we just need we need some recruitment or just to do what I think everyone said before the season started: take the money and run and build a, a side to to win the league next season. And are you uh, taking a week off, or are you doing a Tufty Club reaction to that? Um, it all depends on Mr. Beden and his uh, and his tough times at work. You know, as, as we've alluded to, he's uh, he, he struggles. Poor lad. You know, he's got he's got a, a, a tough job in schools, as as uh, as, as we know, it's a tough sort of what nine till three job. So when you work in a school, you never have to change a headlight on your car. That's a big positive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Dark nights are coming, but not for you. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll see what he says. Uh, yeah, we'll hopefully get something out. Because I think I think we're probably at our best when we're at our, when United are at our worst. So yeah, hey, we'll, look, we'll try and get something out. There. If he can't do it, I think give the people what they want, which is clearly uh, Pompey. And Mark, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. We've been trying to do this uh, for about yeah. six years, so we really really do appreciate. Thanks it. Thanks for having me on a proper podcast, uh, Stroke <laughs> YouTube channel. Thank you. Well, as you <laughs> mentioned, Stroke, I'll leave you with your sock. Um, so, uh, Pompey, your final thoughts as we head towards ugh, West Ham away, a team that I, I hate. It's going to be tough. I mean, it always is tough down, down in, uh, in London. And uh, we've, got enough, we've got Fulham after that as well. So, you know, it, it's all on, it's all on this, the players. Don't get me wrong. The players are going to go into work, probably gone into work today, and they are going to be bereft. And it's up to Hecky now to pick them all up, get them going. You know, come on. This is the trouncing we've been waiting for for years. Unfortunately, it's happened at Bramall Lane, which is not good. Um, they, 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 those players will have looked round at those stands, those pink seats, how many there was by the final whistle, and that will be enough of a message for them that that just really wasn't good enough. It's it's not going to happen again. Okay, we might get dumped four, maybe five nil again this season, but putting a, a performance like that where we get taken to bits, it's not going to happen to you. And from the from the start whistle, West Ham are going to expect exactly the same. And that might be a little bit presumptuous of them to think that they're good. We're going to want to come back out and we're going to want to have to eat our own guts on, on uh, the next game. And we're going to have to really take it to West Ham and push the ball up the pitch, stop giving it away and just go at them. You know, 
we, we were from from three nil down. I expected a response from three nil down. I, w- I was looking. I was thinking to myself, you know, if we lost this three two, I'd be happy. But what we need to go at West Ham and we need to basically chew them up and and and, and get the result. Watch this space; it'll be another eight nil. But um, you know, let's 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 pick the pick the club. It's been a tough week for the club, the whole club. It really has. You know, with with what's happened, the tragedy of Maddie, and this uh, heaped on top of it, which doesn't match the uh, the, the situation with Maddie. But Absolutely. you know, come on, guys, let's end the bad times. Let's get on it and let's get at them and let's get up the table. We don't want to get relegated. Well said. All right, uh, Paul, let's go to you next. You've just heard that rallying cry. Stick the paper yeah. on the wall uh, from Pompey. Your final thoughts? Well, after Pompey's rallying cry there and me earlier saying that. There's a lot of positives to take. Um, I can't see us getting anything from the West Ham game, unfortunately. I, it's just it's going to be tough this season. It's not going to be easy, but we're not going to be humiliated like that again. I think Hecky set out to be a bit too open and attacking yesterday. We massively missed McBurney, and with uh, Osler and Jefferson both injured, we didn't even have a replacement number nine. Um, McBurney coming back makes a massive difference. Uh, It means we don't have to play Norwood, which, you know, he's been a club legend, but as Pompey alluded to, he'd fallen off a cliff in the Championship last season and we had to bring Doyle in. Um, We shouldn't be starting against those athletic uh, centre midfielders we're playing up against. So that makes us tougher to beat straight away. We'll get points. We'll get more than Derby's points total, which is always the first key of anyone in the Premier League. And then again, like I alluded to earlier, if we do go down, I love the championship. Tuesday nights at Bramall Lane, kick off at three o'clock every week. Bring it on. Yeah, I uh, I quite agree. It feels a bit defeatist. Thank you so much, Paul. So, Josh, you get the the final say, the final word. I mean, it's been a real roller coaster without too many highs this season. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's been it's been tiring. It's been difficult, um, but you know. We're saying that we think this might be a freak result. I think it is. I hope it is. It's up to the players now to go and prove that it is. Um, I think Pompey summed it up brilliantly there at the end. You know, we've got to go out there and battle this weekend. Absolutely leave everything out there. Nothing less than our pride and dignity is on the line. Um, Stop the rot and give ourselves a platform then to push on. And I agree totally. We need to be looking long-term as well. This was always going to be a big ask to stay up this season. Yeah. We want to look at the financial and long-term health of the club. And uh, if we go, have to go back down and, uh, you know, I've got to say some of these players, seeing them play in the championship for us would be exciting. <laughs> but I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope we can stay up. So, yeah, bring on the weekend. Yeah, it might even be like a player like Benny Traore. Maybe the championship is made for him and his pace. Josh, thank you so much. Thank you. Again, you're always great value. Thanks to all of the, the guests that joined us. I would just like to quickly say uh, we have been uh, nominated in the Football Content Awards shortlisted pr- Premier League Best Club Content Creator for the third year in a row. But to win this would be incredible. If you can go to footballcontentawards.com, click on voting, and you can vote for Sheffield United Way and Best Club Content Creator. We'll be going up against the Premier League big guns. We're under no illusions. This will be really, really hard. Very difficult. Slight, slight, slim chance of winning, but you vote it really would help us also you can vote for uh, jimmy who's been nominated for best new content creator for blades ramble uh, rainbow blades as well they have been nominated doing uh, incredible work they are in the equality diversity and inclusion award at the football content award so if you'd like to head there and uh, support all there's a lot of great content creators across all of the uh, many different things that sheffield united fans do and i'm proud of each and every one of them thank you for watching. We'll be back when we're back.